G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. As you can see by the way I'm dressed, it's a little bit colder today. And the sun's turned out, which is nice. We'll be looking at the DD Hammock front line. And I had a comment on my last video from Bob, I think it's Bob Anon. I'll put a link down to his channel in the description section. And he commented on what I was going to do and I said he'd done similar so I went to have a look at his videos and saw something else he did which I think is a very good idea to pass on to you guys so we're going to go back out put the hammock up between the same two trees and show you the simple different uh, way of setting it up to give you an even better uh, let's say setup For those who are interested, the pack I'm using today is the Caribbean Ops, which I have shown in one of my other videos. And I think going back a year ago to my videos, a couple of days on the Bibbleman track, I was actually using this pack. And it's one I keep coming back to every now and then, as even though it doesn't have a big fancy a harness system for the price you pay for this is rather comfortable and good quality it's about a 50 litre pack so I'll put down a link in the description box to the video where I did a uh, review of this but I think it's going to get close to a time where in the next five or six months I might do an update review to let you know how it's actually going. Okay, last video, 
I'd made a ridge line, a structural ridge line for the hammock. And what I did was hold the hammock at the fixed length I wanted for the ideal lay for myself. But it did pull the bog net down. And like I said earlier that I saw or had a comment from another guy called Bob. And he had done similar to what I was going to do by putting a grommet in the bog net and running the ridge lines through the inside. But that still wouldn't have lifted the bog net up any higher. Uh, I'll put clips from the last video, in case you haven't seen it, and show you the difference between the last one after the, the modification and this one today. I've made a structural ridge line and I've just pulled it over the top or pulled the continuous loop around the loop at the end of the ridge line and I'll do the same with it down that end. Now let's take you and show you what I noticed on one of Bob's videos. A great idea I think and it enables the bog net to be higher up away and actually make it a little bit more stable also at the top. So when I put an internal ridge line for my ridge line organizer, it should technically hold it up. In the last video, I put the structural ridge line to this point here to 83% of the length of the actual hammock. But what I did notice in Bob's video or one of his videos was he extended, technically extended the length of your hammock to this point, which if you look, runs across the top of the actual bog net. So what I did is I made another structural ridge line to go from here. Now I'll put it on and I'll show you. So here's a new structural ridge line. I'm gonna put it down to the center of here and I might need to put the camera down to do this. And I'm going to attach it to the beetle buckle. Oh no, it worked. So again, I'm going to bring it through the middle. And I'm going to put it through the grommet there. And now I'll take it down and through the next grommet, where the spread bar that end is. And out the other side. Now I'm going to have to take the weight of the hammock and also adjust the straps to allow me to do this. And what I'll do is once it's connected I'll tighten it back up. So again I'm bringing it through the continuous loop underneath the buckle and I'll show you why I'm doing it from underneath in just a moment and let's put this back into place I'm doing is I'm having to when the wind stops I'm having to adjust the bungee which holds the top of the bog net up from either end of the spreader bar and pulls it nice and tight at the top a bit further up because now I've put the longer uh, ridge line on to accommodate the continuous loop to either end technically making this hammock another two foot in length now let's show you. On the beetle buckle, you've got this top bit which you lift up to loosen it to allow you to adjust the strap up and down. So I've taken the uh, continuous ridge line underneath and the structural ridge line and I've just got the bungee cord tucked around the top of it. 
So all three goes to this point here, the beetle buckle. There you go. And I've done the same on the other end. But now, as you can see, it's lifted the bug net right up high. So it's not going to be hanging down right in my face. But we still do have a bit of sag here, just looking at it. But not as bad as it was. So we'll get inside and we'll see how much this lifts. Because what I can do is when I'm having my tarp up, I'll run the ridge line underneath the tarp. And if I actually bring the bungee cord, it'll bring that end up, but the top will sag down. But it'll still keep it out of my face down here where it's important. The preference is your own whether you have this as I've got it now, or had it until it unclipped with the wind. When you're filming and doing this with one hand, it's never easy. But like I said, we'll get you into the hammock and we'll have a look at the difference in the bog nets, how far away from your face it really is now. The bog net's right out of the way. And it's not touching my face at the top here either. You can see, I'm gonna, let's get tight, that's it. Get a decent flat lay. And it's holding the bug net a lot further away. And you can see now, it's actually lifted this section up. Where before, it was about here. Now we've got another three or four inches because it's been pulled a lot better. All that space. I'm looking, I know I'll still be able to use the top, bottom pocket there. Can't get much use out of these ones, I don't think, being up here. Unless I actually took it down that side, but... Whatever I put in there has fallen out in the past. And this one here is right under my shoulder. So I'm not going to be putting anything in that. It's just going to make it uncomfortable. Let's see reason why I'm going to put an internal ridge line, which I've got the loops here for. But yeah. If I tighten that a bit more, can, my uh, bungees come off. But that would take a lot of the sag out. Which is as I pull where the bungee is supposed to be pulling. The sag disappears in the middle there. And with doing that, we still don't lose that we don't lose much if anything about an inch up here with this sagging a bit more so thanks Bob for leaving a comment so I'd go to your channel and have a look at what you've done and some of your good ideas and like I said I'll put a link down in the, uh, in the description section so you can go and have a look at Bob's channel and see any more or any other good ideas that he's got there if you can utilize them use them for your hammock or get an idea of what you can do doing something similar so i'm going to lay here for a while now so i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you're not a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button and the like button and also click on the bell button so you can be notified of all future videos and if you are already a subscriber I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.